Let's take a look at how reproduction takes place. And today we look at the flower. The flower, of course, comprises of various parts, but it produces by a process called pollination. And of course, there are different kinds of pollination, so we'll have a look at those also. The flower has different parts, like the receptacle, sepals, petals, stamen, the male part, and carpal, the female part. It produces by pollination, which is the transfer of pollen grains, and the types of pollination are self and cross pollination. A general structure of the plant or the flower basically shows you the female portion, the stigma style ovary, and the male portion, the anther and the filament. The petal is to attract insects or any pollinating agent. The receptacle houses the portion of the plant or the flower to hold it up, whereas the sepals are outgrowths that protect it, and naturally the stalk which attaches it to the stem of the plant. Have a look at the function of the different parts. The receptacle is the base of the flower to which all the parts of the flower are attached. The sepals are green leaf-like parts above the receptacle. These unite together to form the calyx and their role is to protect the flower when it is in a bud form. The petals are brightly colored, as I stated earlier, to attract agents for pollination. A grouping of petals is called a corolla. The petals help to protect the reproductive organs that are in the center of the flower. The stamen, the male reproductive organ, comprises of the filaments and anthers that house the pollen grains or male sex gametes. The carpal is a female reproductive part of the plant, comprises of the stigma style and ovary. The stigma, which is sticky, receives the pollen grains from the stamen of another flower. These pollen grains get stuck to the stigma. The style is just a tube that attaches the ovary to the stigma. It is a means by which pollen grains can travel down. The ovary houses the ovules that contain the female sex gametes. Some flowers contain only male sex organs, like stamen, and some contain only female sex organs, like the carpal. These are called unisexual flowers. Certain flowers contain both male stamen and female carpal organs and are called bisexual flowers. Pollination. This is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a stamen to the stigma of a female plant or flower and it is of two types, self and cross. So pollination is the transfer of pollen grains. Self-pollination is when pollen grains from an anther are transferred to the stigma of the same flower of the same species. Whereas in cross-pollination, the transfer of pollen grains takes place from the anther of one individual flower to the stigma of another individual flower, but of the same species. If you have a look at the diagram showing you self and cross-pollination, in self-pollination, the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower, whereas in cross-pollination, it is transferred from one flower to the next, but the flowers are of the same species. Self-pollination occurs, as stated earlier, when the pollen grains from the male part of a flower are transferred to the female part of the flower of the same plant, of the same species. Whereas, in cross-pollination, it takes place when the pollen grains are transferred from the stamen, or the male part, to the female part, or stigma, of another flower of the same species. Agents of pollution or poly, poly, of pollination or pollinating agents like insects, bees that is, birds, wind, animals are all responsible and helpful for pollination to take place. I hope you've enjoyed the presentations. 
If you'd like to see more presentations, you can always visit us on our website at www.arrangeacademy.com. Furthermore, for a subscription, you could always check us out on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash arrangeacademy. You can subscribe to us also on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash c slash Academy. Thank you.